How's it going, folks? Welcome to Found Flicks. On this Indian Explain, we're looking at the much ballyhooed Terrifier 2. Ballyhoo! In the return of our favorite killer clown, Art, he is resurrected by a sinister entity and returns to Miles County to terrorize a pair of siblings on Halloween night. We all know what we're here for, more of Art the Clown and his over-the-top, disgusting kills. In that regard, Terrifier 2 certainly does deliver, although just as its predecessor, the story side of things is severely lacking. However, it is a huge improvement over the first and every way. This one at least has a story. It's just strange too because I remember when the runtime came out and it was a whopping two hours and 18 minutes. I was like, good god, man. But then I thought, hey, maybe it'll have some epic story to warrant the length. Nah, not really. It was just kind of the same feel as the first, but you know, longer. Some parts drag on and others really don't even need to be there at all. It's also peculiar as there are kind of hints of something much grander, like magical swords or more insight into art's origins, but it's less than crumbs that we're given. Whatever though, we're really here for art and the kills, and they are as gruesome and disgusting as you'd hope. And I can see it being way too much for a lot of people. Also, the actual practical gore and effects themselves look great and really make the kills that much more impactful and memorable. Anyway, when it comes to that side of the film, fans will be more than pleased. So let's check out art's latest misadventures in Terrifier 2, breaking down the story, in particular those little hints and things sprinkled in there, what we learn about art and his new sidekick, as well as explaining the ending. When we last saw art, he had actually already been resurrected at the very end of the first film. You know what they say? You can't keep a good clown down. And as it's described, some sort of mysterious malevolent force has brought him back to life. We don't know anything about the force either. What does it mean? He's already back on his feet and doing what he does best, murdering people, accompanied by a weird blast of wind and light. Perhaps the entity? I don't know. He checks out his reflection in the mirror, poking at his missing eye. Oh, and he's got a huge exit wound in the back of his head. Remember what happened before? He got shot in the head. Well, if Art could have been human before, that is certainly out the window now. He hasn't lost his particular affinity for murder, bashing the guy's head to bits with a hammer, and then just straight rips his head open and takes out the brain. He's definitely back, but he's gonna need some new killing tools and stocks up on whatever he can around the room, jamming it all into a signature garbage bag. He also needs to get his clown suit its widest, as it's naturally covered completely in blood, so a trip to the laundromat is in order. He strips down without a care and waits for his laundry reading the paper. A headline about a family dying in a car crash makes him chuckle. The machine strangely whirs to a stop, and Art peeks around to see a creepy little clown girl. She gives him a spirited wave, which he returns. She then unleashes a fury of diarrhea or something, never breaking the creepy smile the whole time. She approaches Art and asks him to play a game of patty cake. The other guy there happens to wake up to a quite bizarre sight, a naked clown man playing patty cake with himself. So the demon girl isn't actually there, it seems, but some specific people can see her. Before they leave, Art curiously mops up the mess, but also makes sure to kill the dude too. Pretty much anyone in his path is gonna die. Just bet on that. While Art is pretty much unstoppable, there is someone out there who just might stand a chance to take him out. Sienna! We meet her working on an elaborate Halloween costume, and it is pretty impressive that she can do all this stuff. Amongst the clutter, there's also a sword out on display that looks real, not for cosplay. Her mom is a bit all over the place, trying to hold the family together, still working on the phone while cooking at the same time. I have to say her performance is a little bit over the top. Her younger brother Jonathan is an oddball obsessed with serial killers, and even intends to dress up as art for the holiday. Sienna and her mom both agree that it's in poor taste. You don't see other people dressing up as serial killers. As for Sienna's Halloween plans, she's going out to a party with her friends. Her mom assumes she's gonna be getting drunk, and Sienna insists that she does not drink. She again voices concerns about the boy's strange interests, but mom is certain it's just a phase he'll grow out of. You said that a year ago, Sienna groans. John is in his room doing research on the previous year's murders, pulling out a scrapbook full of articles and stuff detailing the massacre from the previous film. She gets back to working on her costume, and John requests some super glue to fix his little art hat. She still doesn't think this is a good idea, but helps him out anyway. He's impressed by her work. It looks just like their daddy's character. But what about the sword? She scoffs, nah, she'd get arrested in two seconds with that thing. The blade is sharp as shit. Now that's sharp. John wonders if the Miles County clown is still out there. They never found his body, after all. She doesn't get what he's going for here. You think if he saw you in costume, he'd be nice to you? He doesn't actually think so, and knowing that he's scared, Sienna assures him that if he is still alive, he's definitely far away from here. Nope, never left. Later in bed, Sienna drifts off to sleep while watching some TV. She switches the channels to a ditty, encouraging you to drop on by the Clown Cafe. We're then transported into a kind of purgatory-ish set as a lady continues singing about the wonders of the Clown Cafe and its funny tasting food. There's a lovely mural on the wall depicting Art holding hands with children, a rainbow beaming behind him. 
<laughs> oh, nothing Art loves more than kids and rainbows. A loud buzz goes off and Sienna finds herself now part of the kids crew. They keep happily singing along to the incredibly annoying tune and a nun appears with a homeless man chastising them. On another stage, there's another commercial for Art Krispies, including glass, insects, and razor blades. Yum! The clown lady introduces a very special guest, none other than Art the Clown. He pops up at the food truck window with a hearty wave. Sienna is paralyzed in fear while the others all cheer on. He rolls out on his little tricycle to even more excitement and applause from the crowd. Uh, you do know he's gonna probably kill all you, right? Like 100% chance? Art rummages through his bag of death and pulls out treats for all the kids. He has a special present for Sienna, which he refuses at first. She unwraps it, finding a still beating heart inside, surrounded by maggots, eliciting big laughs from the crowd. Back to his bag, Art produces a Tommy gun and blows everyone away. Literally just mows the entire crowd down. Where did he get that Tommy gun? Did they have that at the hospital? Sienna hides under the playground, seeing that she got winged in the leg. He has an extra special means of murder for his clown lady friend, setting her ablaze with a flamethrower. This doesn't stop her from singing and dancing, still doing so while completely on fire. Sienna is glimpsed in bed and she realizes this is a dream. Art sets fire to the entire stage. She crawls to the box of cereal and painfully digs down for the prize as Art stalks towards her. She retrieves the fancy blade and when the fire hits it, it reflects back on him. And then the fire somehow moves to the real world and gets her wings. As far as what the heck this whole clown cafe thing is about, it seems to act as Art's kind of nightmare HQ, similar to Freddy's boiler room. We also get that Art must be after Sienna specifically and is targeting her for some reason. Her mom rushes in with an extinguisher and puts out the fire before it spreads even further. She blames Sienna, calling her stupid for leaving her candles on. She's certain that she didn't, and we did see her blow a mouth, so it wasn't her fault. I mean, obviously. She surveys the crispy wings, and there's not much to salvage there. She turns to the ash remains on the other stand and pulls out the blade, still looking good as new. Hmm, sure seems important. In the morning after, her mom is still grumpy. What else is new? And at least the sword from her dad wasn't ruined. She joins John eating cereal, but grows perturbed by the box, which reminds her of the dream. Art is busy hammering away in some workshop basement, building a new instrument of death. The girl turns on the interview with a local show featuring Victoria that was from the first film. We actually saw this exact moment, but the little girl wasn't there then. She was our only survivor of Art's previous rampage, but she still did get way effed up in the process. Since the attack, she has struggled with being around people as they are frightened of her appearance. As for Art's fate, she is certain he's dead. She saw it happen herself. Art doesn't like that, getting irritated and smashing the TV. He and his new pal next set their sights on Jonathan while he's at school. He leaves class and wanders around the vacant halls, at one point seeing the girl skipping by. He comes to another empty corridor, finding Art there along with the kid playing with a dead possum. Mm -hmm. They throw him the body and he flees in a panic. He bumps right into a teacher who tries to stop him to no avail. And when she goes to where he just was, only the possum remains. So it was just in his head? Not sure. Sienna is joined by her gal pals, who can tell that she's not in the best of moods. Brooke doesn't really help things, telling the others about what happened this morning on the Monica Brown show. Victoria went psycho backstage and attacked her with her bare hands. And it was this big reveal that was what dovetailed the ending in the beginning. It was actually this the interview was at the beginning and then you find out at the end that it was Victoria and you're like, what? It's all too much for Sienna who rushes off to have a panic attack. Her friends try to calm her down, asking what's up. She tells them about the fire, but doesn't say anything about the strange dream and just tries to brush it off as no big deal. Her and Allie later go costume shopping and Sienna is disappointed that she's reduced to store-bought wings. Ugh, disgusting. Allie gets a call from her mom and not paying attention, bumps right into Art. Now I'm just getting closer. Sienna then comes face to face with him, just kind of chilling there motionless in the corner. She keeps her resolve, shirking right past him to get upstairs. She quickens her pace, but is stopped by the shopkeep. Hey, you gotta pay for that stuff, you know? She's on edge and keeps looking back downstairs. She then realizes that she's left her purse down there and Art surprises her, plunking it right on the counter. He tries out some sunflower shades and each time that she turns back, he's changed to another pair. He cranks a noise box and the shopkeep tells him he's gotta pay for that too. Sienna hurriedly puts her stuff in her bag and Art finds a horn. The owner leaves to grab her a bag. You're not in a hurry or anything, right? Art slowly strolls right up to her, putting the horn next to her ear. He honks it incessantly, and she pleads with him to stop. She then takes her wings and hightails it out of there. Art follows after, changing the sign to closed and locking the door. The guy tries to get him to hurry up. That horn is $8.99. Art checks his suit, but no pocket, sitting him rummaging through his death bag. He pulls out more and more alarming objects to the guy's confusion. He warns that he's gonna call the police, and Art pops back up with some bloodstained cash and gingerly counts out change. That would be really annoying. You're like, what is this guy doing? The guy slaps his hand angrily, asking if he heard what he said, which astonishes Art. And now, well, you're definitely gonna die. I mean, you probably were before, but definitely after.
after that slap of disrespect, you don't go around slapping evil clowns that can't die. It's just a recipe for disaster. It's a broken bottle of the head, followed by the double whammy of decapitation that befalls the guy. Afterwards, Art makes it part of the store's front display for a kid and his mom, but the store is closed, so they luckily avoid being slaughtered. Meanwhile, Sienna is growing more and more concerned about her dream and the weird clown. Allie more or less thinks that she's just imagining the whole thing. It's just one big coincidence. No. <laughs> at home, she's given more troubling news from John. The clown is here, and he saw him at school. He shows off a sketchbook featuring Art, and he's convinced something bad is going down tonight. She realizes it's actually their father's old sketchbook. How did he get it? He is undeterred, showing off another article about a girl dying at a local fun fair. It's the very same demon girl accompanying Art now, and he thinks that there's some kind of grand connection between everything going on here. Strangely, their dad even drew Art before his death as though he was some kind of psychic, and he even drew in detail each and every death from the first film. How the heck can he see all that? He flips to another drawing of a girl in a Valkyrie outfit that sure looks like Sienna's, and he considers, what if she's connected too? That's too much for her. But he argues he did create the character for her and gave her the sword before he died. It's like he knew this was coming. Mom joins and really lays into her son. She should have listened to Sienna about him after all. He still pleads with her to believe him, but she says it was probably just a prank or something. Well, what about all the drawings and articles? She gets real. They both know what happened to him, and none of this was his fault. He loved him very much and assures him that everything's gonna be a-okay. He tries one last time to convince her to stay home, but she declines. He moans, well then don't blame me if a bunch of people get killed tonight. Well, a bunch of people already did, and he's just getting started. Just as he warned, Art continues popping around town killing folks. Allie is handing out candy for trick-or-treaters and spots a suspicious looking van parked nearby. The demon girl seen in the passenger seat. The bell rings again, and it's Art with his garbage bag wide open in anticipation. Allie scoffs that he's a little too old to be trick-or-treating, and then realizes it's the same guy from the costume shop. He nods, confirming that it is him, and Al that he really is after some candy. She rebuffs him. No candy for grown-ups, and slams the door in his face. He immediately starts angrily banging on the door, and she shouts for him to leave. He holds out his bag again, and she's confused. Really? Just give him some candy and he'll leave? He nods vigorously, and she tosses some candy at him, catching a peek into his bag of mysteries. She quickly locks the door, looking shaken up. She looks out the window, seeing him walking away. Phew, that was close. On the news, it turns out that Monica is still alive. Victoria was taken into custody, and she had just been released the day before after months of rehab. Like you, she says, addressing Sienna directly. She then just moves on to another story as though nothing happened. Sienna freaks out again, hyperventilating and popping some meds. She lies down and gulps the air, trying to calm herself. She then approaches her costume and decides, after all, that she's gonna go out and have some fun. Screw that stupid clown dream. Sienna dons her costume piece by piece and checks herself out, looking pleased in the mirror. She's a spitting image of her dad's character. Thunder rumbles outside, her neon sign changing to read, No Escape. Allie is getting ready as well, and it turns out that Art isn't intending on letting her go after all. She's drawn away by the door swinging open, and downstairs discovers the back glass door is completely shattered. Art casually strolls in and helps himself to a glass of water, and I'm like, whoa, he drinks water too? Okay, that's weird. Why, why would he even want a glass of water? I don't know. She looks on mortified, and he goes for some kitchen knives. He chases her down, and things get absolutely horrific. This kill was obviously designed to top the infamous upside-down hatchet job from the first film, and they more than succeeded here in pushing the envelope to the max and beyond. I mean, it really goes on and on and on. After a few minutes, there's a part when Art comes back with bleach and salt, which he proceeds to rub all over her wounds and everything. I'm like, she's already dead. Oh my God. Anyway, obviously I can't show you anything from this part. Suffice to say, it's pretty gruesome. <laughs> Just a little bit. Mom is enjoying some royalty-free Night of Living Dead, and Sienna shows off her costume. Her mom groans that her tits are popping out, and Sienna points out it's her dad's character. And this is how people dress up nowadays. She doesn't get what's with all the sex in the Halloweens, but does offer that her dad would have loved it. She meets up with Brooke at a club, and like any good friend would do, spikes her drink with ecstasy. Thanks! She does provide her with some encouragement. Her dad used to draw this character when she was little, and she wanted to grow up to be just like her. Brooke is all, and look at you now. But Sienna groans that she's not strong or brave or anything like the character. After Art messed up his mom's car, Jonathan fled the house, fearing her wrath, running out into the streets. There's a horn hawk from a van, which we now know for sure is Art's. He gets closer, and there appears to be no one inside. The horn honks again, and he hears his mom telling him to come back home. The demon girl appears with glowing yellow eyes, and John runs off terrified. Sienna sees that her mom has called a bunch, and she's found shaving cream covering her car, declaring that John is dead. Sienna doesn't think that he would 
do something like that. And mom can't take it anymore. She's sending him right back to the psychiatrist. Sienna tries to defend him, and her mom accuses her of being drunk. No, I'm on drugs, mom. It's different. Barb starts really losing her shit. I've had it with you and your brother, she yells. Sienna breaks through the bickering, telling her that she loves her. Mom does at least chill out for a second, long enough to say it back, and tells her to get back to the party. Mom sets out to clean up the mess, cursing John for thinking that he'd get away with this. She wipes off some sludge on the window, revealing art inside. He opens fire with a shotgun, blowing her head to bits. Hmm. At the club, Sienna is unaware and enjoying herself on the dance floor. That is, until the demon girl starts appearing, staring right at her. As they lock eyes, she vanishes. She turns, and the girl is somewhere else. She asks Brooke if she can see her, but the dang kid keeps disappearing. She appears right on her arm, and Sienna shrieks, leading into another panic attack. John runs back home and discovers his mother's body displayed at the dinner table. Art comes out ringing a dinner bell, carrying a casserole dish. Again, I'm just like, Art sat around chopping and boiling potatoes? Just weird to think about. He kindly helps his faceless mother eat her potatoes by grotesquely stuffing them into her face hole. Lovely. Art produces a big old syringe and chases after the boy. He makes it to Sienna's room, fending him off briefly at the door. Art kicks it open, and John struggles to reach for the blade. Art snatches him first and jams a needle into his neck, knocking the boy unconscious. He eyes the blade and decides to take it along. Things become a bit tense for the pals. Sienna tries to say that she's fine, but Brooke doesn't buy it. She blames it on the drugs, as she also took Xanax earlier. Brooke defends that she didn't know that, and I'm like, well, maybe you don't drug your friends. I don't know. She gets a call from what sure sounds like John, but it's actually the demon girl mimicking his voice. She lures Sienna down to the abandoned fun fair, the same place that the girl died initially. Still thinking it's her bro, she tells her that she's on the way and to wait by the main entrance. Brooke thinks it's just some kind of a joke, but the random dude here is the voice of reason. The park is just a few miles from here. Eh. Let's go. Should be fun. They arrive at the creepy old fairgrounds and there's no sign of Jonathan. Brooke brings up that it's the same place the girl was murdered a few years ago and I'd wager that it was Art that actually killed her. More on that a little bit later too. Sienna sets out to search for him and the pair stay behind. He thinks they should go with her but Brooke also thinks that he's just gone crazy since their dad's death. Apparently he had a brain tumor that made him do all kinds of messed up stuff. He was seeing things and started getting abusive towards the end, especially towards Sienna. One day he got hammered, drove right into an electrical tower and burned to death. After this, the guy gets why Sienna is the way she is, and Brooke thinks she's doing pretty well, all things considered. Sienna shivers away around the empty grounds and gets a crackly call back from the girl. It quickly dies, and in text, he reveals his location. He's stuck in the Terrifier. John comes to in a haunted doll room. They all roar to life, seeing weird crap all over the place. John is about to move, but is stopped in his tracks by the girl there facing away in a makeup chair. She's doing some kind of self-surgery, mangling her face up good. She turns to him, giggling and peeling away more skin. Sienna is right off front, and it is indeed an actual funhouse-style attraction called the Terrifier, does it perhaps have some connection to Art's unknown origins? I wasn't being coy, I actually have no idea because they don't give us any details to work on whatsoever. Brooke grows concerned about her friend, and is unable to get her on the phone. The dude leaves to rock a piss, seeing just the tip written in fog on the window, just like a shirt, and knife comes out of nowhere, going right for his junk. Art rises, and delightedly stabs the absolute hell out of the guy, and why not just rip the whole dong right out there? <laughs> Brooke freaks out, but is able to get the car started at least. Art runs up to the window, shatters the glass, and drags her out. She does get a good kick in, knocking Art back enough for her to escape into the park. Sienna navigates the labyrinths of rooms and surprisingly hears Brooke shouting for her. She follows the echoing screams and Brooke stumbles into a bathroom covered in blood. Art enters with a big old smile on his face and shows off his new weapon, a piano leg with a bunch of pointy stuff jammed into it. Fancy. He's holding a jar of acid behind his back and fakes her out, tossing it on her face. Her skin sizzles and he smashes her to death with the leg, going until her chest is completely caved in. He cracks open her rib cage and hungrily devours her heart. Ding! <laughs> Sienna arrives moments later, just in time to discover her friend's mangled corpse. Art shows up, watching from the sidelines, and gives her a little wave. He walks closer, staring at her intently. Jonathan pops up behind her, and she screams for him to run, smashing Art in the leg. He brutally tosses her all around the room, and throws her right into a mirror. Croaking on the ground, he kicks her in the gut, and every time she tries to rise, he kicks her back down. Weirdly, of course, he could have killed her, but chose not to for some reason? He instead catches back up to her brother, who quickly hides behind a curtain. Art spins back, almost catching him. He lingers for a few moments before moving on. In the bathroom, Sienna regains her bearings and notices that Art left his death leg behind. John spots an exit sign and makes a break for it. Bad luck, though, as he bumps right into Art, who grabs him by the throat. He slashes at him with a scalpel, cutting his cheek. John falls down and Art applauds, making fun of his tears of pain. Sienna silently sneaks up on him and gives him the business with a leg. She finishes off the beating by stabbing it right into the back of his Head. She grabs her brother and runs for dear life. She has to stop for a moment as her injuries are too severe, forcing her to 
take a seat. She admits that he was right about everything, and he encouraged that perhaps he was right about her too. Art used him to get her here. They must need her for some particular reason. They know based on what daddy saw. She's the only one that can stop them. As for why that is, that's the one thing he doesn't know, and nobody else does either. They don't want to tell us. They move on to a demonic church set and see a bunch of weird revelers, all in insert shots as expected. She tells John to wait behind while she goes on ahead. At the next spot, there is no one there, but in the church, Art has disguised himself amongst the mannequins. He flings the boy down and brutally gives him with chains adorned with cutting instruments. Sienna retaliates with the leg and he gets in a few good licks back. He tosses her right into a coffin and returns to whipping the boy. She crawls over to shield him from the attacks, taking them in his stead. He winds up for another round of big swings and she grabs it, yanking the chain from his grasp. She turns the tables on him, which is only fair. She then muscles a pole right out of the wall and jams it right through his head. So it's all over, right? Not so fast. Art rises and grabs her, attempting to choke her out. John launches a feeble attack, noticing a gun in his ankle holster. He snatches it and turns it on Art. The clown sheepishly raises his hands and John blows him away. In the church, Sienna's eyes flutter, hearing John's voice echoing to stay with me, you gotta wake up. The demon girl takes on Barb's form, gently cooing for her to wake up. She tells her it's okay, you're safe and gives her a big hug. Sienna sobs, she thought she would never see her again. John told you, didn't he? She asks, what? She replies in confusion. He runs in warning, that's not mommy. And she turns back to the little girl form. She grabs Sienna's head, filling it with horrific images of her mother's brutal death, of which she was previously unaware. She instantly breaks down in tears and begins to panic once more. John is gone again, and she drags herself up to find him. Art is busy beating him, and she punches at him angrily to no effect. He grabs her by the throat, dragging her all the way across the floor. She gasps as he tightens his grip and spits blood back in his face, defiantly telling him, fuck you. He shakes his head in disdain and pushes her back, sending her collapsing down through several floors. He leans down over the hole and spits back. She coughs away, gasping and wheezing. Gee, she's sure hard to kill too. A red light glimmers on and she's next to a strange foggy hole surrounded by showbiz style lights. Voices indistinctly cry out from within, but one definitely says her name. She turns back and Art is waiting for her with a big smile. He takes her dad's blade and jams it right through her gut, sending her plummeting right into the soul hole. And for some reason, Art tosses the blade down after her. You think that, why would you give her a weapon? I don't know. Unless he wanted her to have it. That's what I keep thinking, that it is what he wanted to happen. Sienna wakes up in a tank of water back in the clown cafe. She pounds at the glass furiously, seeing what looks like a tentacle or something holding her down. The crowd laughs, including the clown lady still on fire. They throw popcorn in disgust as she screams and struggles to breathe. They all start chanting the clown cafe theme, but now it's all deranged on account of them being milky eyed and, you know, dead. Sienna keeps fighting, but eventually convulses and drowns. The others all cease moving along with her. Sienna slumps lifelessly, blood pouring from the still fresh stab wound. Elsewhere, Jonathan wakes up to an alarming sight. Art is there munching down on his hand. He tries to crawl away and Art grabs at his leg. He cries for his sister, seeing the blade nearby. It begins to charge with a red energy and the same effect appears on her wound as well. It looks like it heals her and she shakes back to life. She tears at the tentacle and rips it off, swimming to freedom. Well, the knife wound up being surprisingly capable of some kind of magical healing ability at the very least. This brings up so many questions about her dad and everything else, which of course isn't addressed at all, but I promise we'll get to all that, at least what I think it all means. Art is too busy eating and doesn't even notice Sienna re-emerging. She gets him from behind and as he crawls away gets another stab right in the neck. He nods slowly showing off his neck and she hacks at him repeatedly until completely removing his head. And she lets out a primal scream looking like Art is dead for good. Well you think that was the whole point of the blade right? Some magical weapon that can kill him for good? Regardless, there is still his demon girl companion to deal with. Sienna raises the blade and protects her brother. The girl grabs Art's head and giggles as though he's talking to her. She flashes them her glowing yellow eyes and happily trumps off, holding Art's head like a baby. The siblings are finally left alone and hug in relief. Although there is yet another dangling thread in Art's web. Victoria, who now is put back into psych lockup after her attack on Monica. She starts scrawling words on the wall with blood. And when she walks away, see Art and V forever housed in a heart. Oh. When we last saw her, she did seem to enjoy her attack, but now it seems she actually is in love with the killer clown. Her nurse elsewhere hums the clown cafe tune, saying that Victoria has been singing it all day. In the hall, she hears her singing it, and then grunting and groaning. She approaches the door, seeing her all bloody and munching on something. She frantically unlocks the door and screams in terror. Victoria has given birth to Art's head. He smiles, and the nurse loses her shit. These eyes glow, and that's where we leave things for now. With Art resurrected once more, guess he still needs a body though, or just put his head on the end of a stick? 
sick or something. All right, now do y'all see what I was saying? The story is all over the place and hints at a whole bunch of different stuff, but doesn't really develop any of these many different threads. The way things play out, it's as though there's some kind of grand prophecy that Sienna's father saw her destined to defeat Art once and for all using the sword. But for what we actually find out, that is never really even brought up in any capacity at all. It's just super weird. All of this stuff is completely underdeveloped, but we have time for the whole Jonathan being obsessed with Art thing that goes absolutely nowhere. I thought he would at least like, you know, be pals or something. Or also the completely pointless extended nightclub scene. Didn't need it at all. I don't know if the intent was to detail more in a possible Terrifier 3, but we were given even less than breadcrumbs to go on here, like I was saying. There's even another layer to the story that it actually feels like the outcome is exactly what Art wanted to happen. As John notes, he was used to get to her and Art didn't want to kill her because he could have easily done that at many points. He wanted her alive for some reason. It seems that it was all to motivate her to be resurrected by the blade and then take him out again. He even encourages her to cut his head off as though he wants her to. This is sort of reinforced when we see Victoria's eyes glowing yellow. The only one we've ever seen have that is the demon kid. It made me think that it was actually her responsible for the rebirth. And again, ultimately that this was their plan from the beginning. And also the demon girl could be the malevolent force that brought him back in the first place because you know, she wasn't around in the first one and suddenly you're like, where did she come from? There really is a whole bunch of stuff that could take the series into a much bigger scale wise. And perhaps we'll see some of that in the inevitable Terrifier 3. With that, we reach the conclusion of this scene explained for Terrifier 2. Don't forget, before we go, you can send me requests for any movies or TV shows. You'd like to see me explain by sending them my way on any of my social media accounts at Foundflix. What did you think of Terrifier 2 and its ending? Where do you want to see the story go next? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks for watching Foundflix. See you next time.